All right, and welcome back to this awfully spooky edition of Awfully Silly. Um, I particularly enjoyed Seven Mansions, and the next game that we have coming up is also really, really good, you know, in quotes, depending on how you like it. But this one, I think, is actually, uh, you know, people are pretty well received with this one. A uh, few announcements before we get started, though. Um, after this show, after this one, uh, you can stay tuned for That's Never Happened Before, which will be showing off a variety of glitches and a link to the past. You know, a lot of really fun glitches in there. Also, tomorrow, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, is Aimbob, which has a variety of first-person shooter speedruns. So you're going to want to definitely check out both of those. Also wanted to highlight, if you are enjoying Awfully Silly as a show, this show premieres every other Monday with Team Velocity at Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And if you are counting the, the weeks ahead, you will notice that the next time the show would be premiering would be during AGDQ. So we will not be premiering, obviously, during AGDQ, so we'll be taking a little bit of a break, and we'll be back on January 24th with our next episode of this one. Um, but for now, I, th I think it's just about time. We gotta we have to dive into Kudalka. I just am so excited for this run. I'm um, very excited to uh, be having Miss Scarlet Chan Tanager uh, show it off for us. So go ahead and take it away, Miss Scarlet. <laughs> so hello, yes, I am Miss Scarlet Tanager, and I will be playing Kadalka. For those who don't know, this game is one of those PS1 games that attempted to merge survival horror with RPG, so it's got a little bit of Resident Evil and a little bit of Final Fantasy. It's strange. If you've ever played Shadow Hearts, this is technically the game that came before that. And if you see behind me, I have bunnies. Don't mind them. They are just going to chill. And we will get started. Now, before I hit new game, I'm going to go into the configuration menu because unlike most games of this era, this game actually has almost full button remapping. And the buttons that uh, it has on default are kind of awful, in my opinion. So before I ever start a run, I always switch it so it looks like this just because it's easier for me. Um, now, start, oh, start, start, sorry. <laughs> Little nervous. Okay, so we are going to be playing as Kadelka, the name of the uh, game, who is trying to infiltrate a monastery in Wales called the Nemeton Monastery. And we just skipped a cutscene that explains some of that and went straight into a boss fight. Mini boss fight? Mini boss fight, we'll call it that. So this game sort of has a little bit of Final Fantasy tactics going on with a grid-based system that you can walk around in during the combat. And each turn, you can take one action and one movement. For most of the game, we're not going to be doing any movement at all because that's slow and that takes time. So unless something goes wrong, I sh with a couple exceptions, I shouldn't actually be doing any movement. And there's the first fight. Now you end up having three characters and you get them all very quickly. And they end up being your party for the entire game. And I like to refer to them lovingly as the dysfunctional family. Because if you've ever seen this game or watched any of the cutscenes, um, all of your party members kind of hate each other for most of the game and they bicker like old, like an old married couple. And the person that we just got is Edward Plunkett, who is my personal favorite character because he is equal parts Wild West cowboy and equal parts not that bright. Now, one thing that Kadelka has that a lot of games don't have is it has two different types of save points. It has both temporary and permanent save points. The permanent save points refill all of your health. And as you can see here, sometimes Kadelka decides she just doesn't want to go downstairs. Uh, but it also has a lot more temporary save points. And that becomes very interesting for something that you will never see during a speed run. But if you save at very specific times down to the second, you get items. I don't know how that works, but if you were to save the game at 1 hour, 11 minutes, and 11 seconds exactly, you'll get an item. If you save it at 2 hours, 22 minutes, and 22 seconds, you'll get an item. It just appears in your inventory when you load the game next. Um, now, we just came across a lovely old couple who are the caretakers of this monastery. And what Kadelka knows, but poor Edward doesn't, is that they just poisoned Edward with the food that they gave him. Kadelka didn't have any food because she's smarter than that. But don't worry about it. He's fine. It's just a mild case of severe food poisoning with probably rat poison or something. So, 
One thing that can make this game a little bit difficult to run is the sheer RNG. Because with a lot of RPG games, you'll have your regular RNG from random battles like I just got into. But the downside is everything in this game is randomized, just about. You have random battles, but all of the equipment, all of the weapons, they also have random effects, random uh, skill bonuses that they give you, and random strengths. And also random elements that they can have. Which means that right here is the biggest reset point in the game, generally, in my opinion. Because you pick up two items here. Come on. Come on, Kadelka. There we go. You pick up the hammer and you pick up the pipe. Now, depending on the elemental attributes of these, you might have to reset the game. Not necessarily because... Oh, yep. See, if either of these weapons are light, vital, or mystic, it's usually a reset. Because if they are, it's going to hamstring you and could lead to a game over later. Thankfully, I prepared for this eventuality. So at this point, I am going to reset the console. Now, if I was on my own stream and this wasn't a marathon where I'm showcasing the game, I would completely reset here. Instead of that, I have a backup save that actually has elemental attributes on those weapons that are correct. It sucks, but at least it is early in the game and not later. And thankfully, you only have to worry about most of the RNG parts of this game early on because it stops being as much of a thing later. Okay. Now let's see if my memory card actually decides to read because it didn't earlier. Hey! <laughs> okay. Yes, this game definitely has a bit of an early game reset problem. I think the longest I've gone with having to reset at that early game moment is um, an hour and a half, I think. It was about an hour and a half, and that part only comes about five minutes into the run. So I loaded my save at a temporary save point that was over there. It's the closest one to where I was at, so we're going to have to do a little bit of running to get back to where we were. Come on, Cody. Hey, she's actually behaving for once. A lot of the time she just decides not to go upstairs and I end up running into stairs for about four or five seconds before she decides to actually use them. There we go. Okay, now we're back where we were. So, in this backup save, I have a fire hammer and I have an air pipe. Not ideal, but it works. Okay. And the next thing you have to do is you have to put your characters in a specific formation, mostly because it just shaves off a little bit of time in the cutscene that's coming up. Or not the cutscene, the boss fight that's coming up. There we go. Okay. I should have flipped those two, but oh well, too late, already doing it, let's go on. Okay, there's a suspicious priestly man sitting on the ground there, and we just got attacked by a boss. Before I put the RNG of the items is already set at this point. Um, the RNG of the... I'm not sure if the RNG of the items can be um, manipulated at all. As far as I know, they can't be. This is one of the few times in the game where you'll actually see me use the move command during a fight. Because you want to get right up in this guy's... Right up in this guy's girl. Now, if I had actually paid attention, I would have swapped the position of these two characters. But it's too late for that. It's fine. Air pie pipe. Yes. One thing that also can be randomized in this game is the weapons can have randomized elements, but sometimes they have randomized status effects as well. And sometimes you'll get a poison effect on the weapon, which kind of can be helpful in some in some scenarios. But generally, it's the elemental attributes that are important, especially for not necessarily this fight, but the fight after it. And boss fight done. And the reason that went so fast is because I used magic with Kadelka to cast fire because this is a Final Fantasy game crossed with Resident Evil. 
and because I had a fire pipe. Now, this is the level up system. It is strange. You don't normally see this sort of level up system in a in, our, in an RPG of this era. Because, let's see if I can remember exactly how I have to level up. Because there's a very specific way that you need to level up the characters in the beginning of the game in order to help you out later. And yes, I still have to use a cheat sheet for this game because of that. Okay. The characters are leveled up, and now we get to go look at this body. And this body is the third member of our trio, James O'Flaherty. He is a priest, and he is... Let's just say he's an interesting character. If you ever have an interest in playing this game, I recommend it just for the cutscenes alone. They have some of the best cutscenes in, in video game history, and that's not me being facetious. They are actually very well voice acted and completely mo-capped, which you don't see very often for a PlayStation game. You also have resistant to magic and all serial and healing. That is correct. The attributes in this game are sort of mirrored of each other. There is the three magical ones and the three physical ones. Piety is the equivalent of magical defense. But the problem is, is it also makes you resistant to healing. So for the most part, you don't actually get piety in this game. Oh, I actually forgot to move James. Oops. <laughs> now this is one of the only times that you Besides one other time where you'll actually want to fight the random battles because you want to get James leveled up by one before the next boss fight, or you're going to have a hard time. Okay, James, let's do the thing that I was supposed to do in the inventory and completely forgot to do. And yes, this game also has ammunition, which can be annoying. being randomized in this game you can either end up having a very very great run or you can end up struggling the entire time if you get bad rng on all of the stats of your weapons and armor now let's actually do what i was supposed to do okay kadelka you need to go you need to go over here so you go up you go over side there we go Thankfully, you don't have to mess around with the formations very much in this game. You only have to do it two or three times. Kadaka just has a gun. She'll only have a gun for a little while. Though, if you ever play this game casually, just so you know, you can rename every single item, every single weapon, and every single piece of armor to whatever you want. Not including some of the story storyline key items. Those you can't rename. But you can rename a potion to Hamburger if you wanted. And every potion you pick up from that moment on will be called Hamburger. <laughs> Great, now I'm hungry. <laughs> I should just had a um, veggie burger just before the stream. Actually, for, for real, I did have cheeseburgers for dinner. <laughs> okay, so this enemy is pretty interesting. There is one other moment where you have to do a little bit of grinding just so you can get Kadelka's HP above 800 for a very specific part that happens on disc three yes that happens at the beginning of disc three so this enemy can drop oh, i didn't okay this enemy and his upgraded version can drop an item called a chain mail and i can't remember two different types of a chainmail-esque item and that helps you not have to grind because theoretically you can skip the grind section that you have 
um, that you need to do at one point, which saves five to ten minutes. But it all depends on whether or not. James didn't level up, did he? James, did you level up? You didn't. Ah! <laughs> okay, that was bad RNG. So we just get to sit here for a second and run into a wall. Because you need to have you want to have James at level two, or you're going to have a hard time. <laughs> That's what grinding in Kadalka looks like. Running into a wall. I think that's the first time I have ever had James not level up after two fights. But I guess that's probably because uh, Marathon mode. Yep, that's probably exactly why. <laughs> you know, the famous that's never happened before. Speaking of, right after this, that's never happened before is going to be off and on uh, with a link to the past. So <laughs> feel free to watch that. That was unintentional. <laughs> I'm a professional uh, segwayer, so. Ah, so that's so that's what you're here for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Now, one thing that is a little bit dangerous with the fact that I'm having to. Are you gonna? Okay. With the fact that I'm having to do three fights instead of two, is that Kadelka has weapon degradation. And just like everything else in this game, the durability of weapons is randomized. Sort of. So if if either James or Edward's weapons broke during this fight, it would make the boss fight much harder. Thankfully, I accidentally picked up that club earlier, so it wouldn't necessarily be a complete run killer. Ooh, I got whiskey. Whiskey is the equivalent of a phoenix down in this game. It can be very helpful. Not as helpful as a panacea, but, and we are in a boss fight. There is no warning in this game. You just get a little text pop up that says, you got attacked. All right, so these three are your classic RPG, Final Fantasy-esque. One of them's resistant to fire. One of them's resistant to earth. One of them's resistant to fire. And they all have elemental weaknesses, which is the reason why you have to be careful about what the elemental attributes of the items that you get are. This is going to be the only use of Fortify. Which one else do I use? Uh, I've done this before, I swear. Vitality, that's what it was. This is going to be the only usage of Fortify Vitality and one of two usages of the Fortify spells in the entire speedrun. Can weapons be repaired? They cannot. When they are broken, they are broken. Okay, which one is weak to? The fire is blue, so I want to be first. Oh, okay. I guess I got a really powerful hammer. I've never one-shot him before. Mm, I'll put you over here. You die in combat, just have some whiskey? This is true. So one little bit of menuing that can make the game more difficult on accident is it is faster to hit triangle and attempt to escape then it is actually hit down and try to um, wait, do the wait command. That has caused me to lose runs before when I have accidentally run away from one of the couple random encounters you actually want to get. So sometimes muscle memory can completely screw you over. Okay, that was less than ideal. So when Kadelka gets silenced, if you manage to, through the random fights, get a Panacea, and I did not, so we just get to deal with it. Which means this fight is now going to take a couple minutes longer, and that's the reason why my estimate is two hours and 30 minutes instead of two hours or less. We love a nice, safe estimate. You definitely need that for Kadelka. Uh, the, the, um, oh, you are not close enough. I did not move you close enough. Okay. The, um, 
World record for this game is an hour and 32 minutes and 58 seconds by a user called Dilaneka, and who is the person who also did the guide that I used to help myself to remember some of the RNG and the little bits and bobs for this game. And that's about an hour off from my estimate, and there is a very good reason for that. This game can either be kind or it can be very, very punishing. There is no middle ground. But yes, I will grant you it has some of the best fight music in the history of video games, in my opinion. Well, that was not very nice of you. I need to hit that guy with my hammer. Also, one thing that to keep in mind about this game is sometimes you have to actually move a character if they're using a ranged weapon because you can't shoot through your allies. There's no friendly fire, but you can't shoot projectiles through your enemy or through your allies. So you actually have to move around your allies sometimes. Yes, I'm aware I can't escape game. It's just faster to try to escape. The downside of not being able to cast Vitality twice on this guy is the fight's gonna take longer because he has more HP. That's what the point of casting the Fortify spells on enemies is. It causes their, it, it's an anti-Fortify if you cast it on enemy. So it reduces his HP. But since I can't do that, oh, I guess I could now. Because silence only lasts maybe five to ten rounds, depending on RNG. Kadelka not a spellcaster? Kadelka is a spellcaster. It's just she only has so much HP, or <laughs> HP, MP, this early in the game. Later, it's not an issue, but in the beginning of the game, it very much is an issue. Also, she got silenced because I got bad RNG. Kadalka got silenced again, because of course. This is true. Um, the Kadalka composer... Uh, I can't remember his... name off the top of my head, but yes, he did compose um, Secret of Mana. And I think something else, but I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. So from this fight, you'll always get a tabar, a ring, and another weapon. But you always equip the ring on Kadelka, and you equip the dirk that I got from behind the painting earlier. Now, Kadelka is almost OP. And I say almost because it's going to take a couple more items for her to get truly OP. But by the end of this game, Kadelka will turn into an absolute glass cannon. Which, because of the grid system that the game has... Um, as long as you have Edward in front of Kadelka, and as long as Edward does not go down, an enemy cannot get behind Edward to attack Kadelka physically. And because of the fact that her stats will eventually be high enough that nothing can really kill her with magic, as long as you keep Edward up, then 
Kadalka's immortal, and you can just mow down everything in this game in just a few hits. With one very important exception later on. All right, so this fight's a little bit interesting. Instead of... Uh, there we go. So this fight can either take approximately one to two minutes, or it can take you about six or seven. All based on whether or not Kadelka gets silenced by the attack that the enemy is readying right now. So let's see if I get lucky. did not get silenced by that attack, which means that I can simply use a tornado again, and that should kill the boss. If it doesn't, I can smack her with Edward's hammer, and then the enemy will be gone. But... And... Oh! Did not kill her! Darn it. Okay. And that is entirely based off of the RNG of what of the items that Kadelka has, so that Dirk and that ring. If they don't have high enough stats, then that happens. But if they do have high enough stats, then you can take it out in one hit. Or two hits. another ring and we always want to put the equipment accessories on Kadelka if we can because we really want her to be overpowered because when do you not want to have your character being overpowered come on Kadelka okay sometimes she decides she just doesn't want to run so at this point in the story, our three heroes are just running around trying to figure out what's going on in this mansion. They're all there for different reasons. Some of them, like Edward, is just fame and glory because he feels like it. Mm, okay. This is something that I have screwed up on before. I actually, at the area where I had that fight against the mummy bride, I was supposed to then look at the chest again because there's a rope in there that I need for this section. So I did screw them up a little there. Thankfully, you don't actually get in too many random battles. So this may be a JRPG adjacent game, but the speed run for it is, again, can be beaten in two hours. Even though it's across four discs. I don't know if this game has a digital version, but it absolutely should because I adore this game. And for most people, digital would be the only way that you would play it because this game costs a pretty penny nowadays, sadly. Which apparently is what I am going to be known for playing at GDQ Twitch Dreams is playing the rare games that nobody else owns because they're way too expensive. It's a good thing to be known for. <laughs> well, between this and Kuon and the games nobody else has played. This game have any major glitches? Not that have been discovered. I cannot think of a single glitch that has been found in this game. Not... Yeah, I, can, I cannot think of one. It would be interesting if there was one, but as far as I know, there is not. But with a game like this, you don't really need glitches so much because the game can be so easily broken if you know the mechanics. 
So that was a, that I picked up just then was a piece of glass that there is four or five of them and you have to make sure you pick them up because if you don't, it's going to be a headache trying to get back here for them later in the game. You won't need them until this, the end of disc two, but they're still a headache to get if you don't pick them up as you go. Okay, so for this fight, you have a very specific sequence of events in order to get through the fight as quickly as possible while taking the least amount of damage. So the first thing that we do is we want to cast Fire on James. Now these are doppelgangers of our three wonderful characters. And you want to place your characters in a specific way in order to get the enemy to also sit in a specific way. have high agility right now. That's very nice. Been going to complain about the price he's selling it for. Yeah. My copy of Kuan cost me almost $600, and that was last year-ish. Now it goes for much more than that. <laughs> Which is mildly terrifying. Okay. Hmm, that was bad RNG. You actually don't want to push Kadelka back there because it can cause a little bit of breaking in the RNG. Which, I mean, it's fine. It just means that the fight may take a little bit longer because you have to move around in a way that you weren't expecting. Why is this game so expensive? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish I knew. This game, Kadelka, is not that much cheaper than Kuan. Though I tend to make pe people jealous and I tell them that uh, I did not pay a dime for this game. <laughs> okay. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Yeah. Back in high school, <laughs> back in high school, I borrowed this game from my friend Gina. And by borrowed, I mean I borrowed it and probably forgot it existed in my room for approximately 10 years. Um, so yeah, technically I didn't pay a dime for this. <laughs> Ever know games worth $600? I would generally agree with that. I have quite a few games that are now worth worth that much, but I really wish this game had a digital copy because it is definitely a great game to play and I wish more people got the chance to play it. That is also true. Kadelka had a very low production run. But at the same time, all we have to do is put Kadelka and Kuan on digital stores. Problem solved. All right. James was supposed to level up there, but he didn't. Again, some more of the RNG just seeking to mess with me. So I'm going to save here just for safety. Because we are already at the end of disc one. And we are not allowed to, allowed to have cutscenes, so we have to skip that. Most of the cutscenes in this game, at least for the first roughly half of the game, 
are just the three main characters arguing with each other. It's very well done arguing. It's very well animated arguing. But it's mostly just them arguing about Did you find everything under the sun. <sighs> Which happens when you have three party members who actively hate each other for the first half of the game. All right, now we are on disc two. If it loads, okay. So we fell down a pit, like you do, except unlike you usually do, we fell down into a pit full of dead bodies. Because lo and behold, this monastery that we find ourselves trapped in uh, was built on top of a prison. So now we are in the prison section, sort of. We go through some of the prison towards the end of the game, but most of the prison section we go through here. Is this game a safe run? Yes and no. It can be made safe and I'm running it safe, but you have to take a lot more risks if you want to get good times because of the RNG in this game. Okay, where is it? There we go. They need to pick up these two items here. Take a look at the dead bodies in order to trigger a cutscene. That cutscene doesn't appear unless you look at the dead bodies and pick up those items. I don't, I can't remember if you have to pick up both of them. I just generally do just for safety reasons. So we just had a cutscene with a little ghost girl who is an evil little ghost girl because this is a game made in Japan and they always are. And she has sicked this ghost on us. Now, thankfully this, oh, Kadok only has one HP. Did she die? When did that happen? Okay, either way, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna cast this on him. And that to bar we got earlier, we want to equip that on Edward. And just because safety reasons, I'm gonna throw this high potion on Katelka because I didn't notice she was at one HP. I don't know how that happened because whenever you level up, your characters are supposed to get full health refresh. But for some reason, Kadelka was at one HP there. I honestly don't know what happened. I'm assuming the game bugged out. Game is just throwing everything at us this time. Yeah, that's what Kadelka does. Welcome to Kadelka. <laughs> Kadelka actively hates you. Yeah, because yet again, that's never happened before. Well, that was entirely useless. You took away strength from the characters that never use strength. Good job, Mr. Enemy. So from this point on, most of the game is going to be setting up Kadelka to spam magic. That, that, that's what it be. I don't think, I think we're at the point where he can't do any damage. Yeah, at least not much. Okay. Normally, I don't attack with him, but Kadelka is not yet powerful enough to be able to take him out in two hits like normal. Now we want to keep Kadelka specifically, we want to keep her agility up as high as possible for most of the game, just because that lets her do more things quickly. And because she is our glass cannon who will be doing the majority of the damage in this playthrough, just pump her full of agility until we feel otherwise. All right, so you always want to pick up this mace, specifically so you can throw it at Kadelka, because it will always be more powerful than that Dirk at least in terms of magic. So this should be the last formation that we have to do in the entire game. And now we're good. You'll never see the formation screen for the rest of the playthrough. <laughs> because this is the point of the game where we just stick everybody behind Edward, throw all of Edward's level up points into vitality so he turns into a brick wall and win.
Also, one of the reasons why you hard, except for one specific moment, you don't really do any grinding in this game, even though it's an RPG, is the enemies don't really give out hardly any experience. They give out a very, very small amount, but compared to the just buckets of XP you get from the boss fights, it's pretty negligible. The only reason there really is a one grind spot coming up after the next boss fight is not because of giving levels to the characters, because you're trying to get a chainmail for Kadelka for the one portion of the game where she is entirely alone, which is the scariest portion of this run. What you are watching is what happens when Resident Evil decides to have a baby with Final Fantasy. Didn't mean to actually wait on him. Okay, this is going to be the second time in the game where you actually use the fortify spells. You're going to fortify Kadelka's intelligence twice. And the reason you're doing that is because pretty much no matter what you do, Kadelka's not going to be powerful enough to be able to two-shot this enemy. But by doing this, as soon as both of those spells go off on Kadelka, she will be powerful enough to hopefully two-shot this enemy. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. The one thing that Edward's not good at and won't be good at for the entire playthrough is actually taking damage to the, or taking magic damage to the face. He can take every other type of damage pretty well, but not magic. Okay, I want to use Megalith. Fortify Pi? Pi is my favorite named ability that you don't do anything with the entire speedrun. Piety is the equivalent of magic defense. Um, okay. So you have strength, vitality, and I am not remembering the third one, but vitality is essentially physical defense, piety is magic defense. It's very simplified because they all have their fingers in a whole bunch of different game mechanics, but that's the best way to think of it. Okay, just for safety reasons, I'll let James actually do something for once. For most of the game, James really isn't helpful. Cakey is not a thing. This game is in love with pie. No cakes, only pie. Which I'm okay with because I don't really like cake that much. I don't know about you, but I don't really like cake that much. Controversial opinions. Yeah, hmm. I'm not. I'm not huge on cake or pie, to be honest. I like. I'm like a cookies, ice cream guy. You know what I mean? I like vegan cheesecake because I'm a I'm a dirty, filthy vegan. <laughs> cheesecake. Cheesecake is pretty good. Cheesecake is pretty good. Cheesecake. It's like a pie crossed with a cake. It's both. The best of both worlds. Okay, I'm going to do another safety save here real quick. Now, normally I go through this entire playthrough without doing a single save, which can be scary for a game like this, but... Only really at a couple points, because this this speedrun is relatively safe, especially because the combat is not in like an ATB system like you'd find in Final Fantasy IX or Final Fantasy VIII. So it can be relatively safe. With again, the exception of two moments that I can think of where it gets a little dicey. All right, now we are having another cutscene where all of our characters decide to have a shouting match at each other. They're very good at that. <laughs> I joke, but 
I'm also being dead serious that most of the cutscenes in this game are the characters fighting each other. Mostly just James fighting with the other two, but... Okay, we want to make sure we pick up those bow guns because we will need them for the upcoming fight. Bunny? Where? Oh, you mean behind me. Yeah, they, they're chilling. Our names are Garrus and Tally, if you're wondering. They are named after exactly who you think they are. See, and sometimes the game just decides I'm not allowed to run away from fights. In which case, you get stuck for a hot minute. Now, how many random battles you get into and how easily it is to run away from them is almost entirely dependent on the luck stat. And because you never upgrade the luck stat during the speed run, it's pretty much entirely based off of the random um, equipment attributes. How many random battles you get into during the speed run. Again, this game has a lot of RNG in it. Now, just for safety, I'm going to pick this up. I almost never do, but because of one specific thing later, I'm going to. Okay. So this is the room of the grind. This will be the one place in the game where you actually grind for grind random encounters in order to try to get specifically a chainmail for Kadalka. Because for the section coming up, you need to make sure that Kadalka has 800 HP or you're going to have a bad time. I have managed it with her having 650 HP, but that was with that was with some clenching. I'm gonna be spending probably about five-ish, five to ten minutes just doing some grinding here. So if anybody has any questions about this game, please let me know. Okay, so for this guy. Now, this is the part where I've gotten myself in trouble before accidentally running away from encounters because of muscle memory. Now, I'm doing this on purpose. There is specific strats for the random fights that you get into here. For this one specifically, you kill the ghost that I killed and then you run away because there's not really much point in killing the other ghost because you don't really get much for it. Now, the upside of having to do this grind in order to try and get a chainmail or get some more equipment is you end up getting leveled up. So this is the part of the game that makes the run through safe if you're doing it, if you're doing the speed run casually or if you're doing it to try and practice. Which company developed this game? Um, SNK. Published by Infrograms. <laughs> okay, this is the fight you want to get because that armor, just like the one earlier that I talked about, that armor can drop chainmail. It is totally RNG, whether or not he does, but if he drops a chainmail, then we're pretty much good. If he doesn't, we're grinding. Oh, for this guy. Is that a headless school? That's a half body. So for him. Tornado. And yes, I have to keep a list to memorize some of the elemental weakness. Oh, I almost messed up. To keep track of some of the elemental weaknesses because there is a lot of them. Sacknoth. Yeah, Sacknoth is the people who made this game. You're right. Um, I was looking at the wrong part of the manual. Sacknoth developed it. It was published by SNK and Infograms. Which, by the way, one of the ultimate weapons that you also will not see during a speedrun is the Sacknoth, which is a sword. Is this game on PC at all? Sadly, no, it is only on PlayStation. Though, if you know the Shadow Hearts games, this is the direct predecessor to Shadow Hearts. In fact, Kadelka, our lovely little glass cannon, appears in Shadow Hearts as a pretty, pretty important side character. All right, are we going to get good RNG? Good RNG? 
Uh, we'll see. Ah! <laughs> Work with me, game! <laughs> Work with me, game. <laughs> the game must know that I'm doing this as a marathon. Game. Okay, let's try this again. I tend to do this little grind session slower in terms of menuing, just to make sure that I don't get the muscle memory problem that I've got in the past and accidentally run away from the fights. A lot of some of the fights in this game is just going to be you either waiting with Edward or waiting with James. Because for most of the game, you're just trying to get to get out this turn. <laughs> Edward spends the entire game being a glass cannon. Or not a glass cannon, being the protection for the glass cannon. <laughs> and James is just mostly useless until the end of the game. <laughs> Now, one thing that's interesting is, theoretically, you could turn Edward into a mage. You could make Kadelka a fighter. The game lets you do that, it's just their beginning stats definitely have them down set paths, but you can change those by just pouring their, uh... pouring their... I'm gonna put that into Vitality just in case. By changing their stats. Second time! Okay. <laughs> okay, game. The game just does not want to give me a chainmail, do they? And this is the reason why my uh, estimate is so high. The speedrunning gets the canon ending. So there are two endings to this game. There is the canon ending and the good ending. If I don't get a chainmail from this fight, I'm going to be very disappointed because the the RNG for getting a chainmail, the chance of getting a chainmail is actually pretty high. So if I don't get it three times in a row, that's really, really bad RNG. Now, the only difference between whether or not you get the canon ending or you get the good ending is whether or not you defeat the final fight. The speedrun does not finish the final does not defeat the final boss because that takes time and that's slow so we don't do that. But there is a speedrun category for the good ending if I recall. I think it's the all bosses one. on, RNG. Peace. Thankfully, this is the only time that you have to do this during the run, so. backup strat if you can't get chainmail um the back i already did part of the backup strat just in case but you you need to have kadelka's hp be at a hundred it be at 800 and you can just do that by um oh, okay um you can do that by just giving her some level ups and just pouring that into vitality it's not ideal because it can make her a little bit weaker with her magic later on but if it's what you gotta do because the game's being mean to you, it's what you gotta do because the game's being mean to you. Which the game's being mean to me.
I can't remember off the top of my head what the um, average drop rate for the chainmail is from this enemy, but it's pretty. It's not. It's not rare. I have got. I've have had runs where from two fights I got two chainmails in a row. It's not an uncommon drop. The game just doesn't like me today. <laughs> But again, thankfully, I have a backup. May R and Jesus be with you. It's never with me. You just soft lock? No, thankfully, it's not a soft lock if I don't get a chain mail. It just makes later on a pain in the butt. Oh, yes, there is also a very infamous ending to this game. It, I say it. It's ending with quotation marks because technically it gives you a game over screen. But it does cause all of our party members to get Indiana Jones, as in face melty. So it is kind of fun to watch because it's an FMV, but okay. Come on. Yes! <laughs> I, I was thinking, it's like, should I put all of those points into intelligence or should I put it into vitality? But no, we got a chain mail. Success. Okay. Fourth time is the charm. Oh my god, that is the worst RNG I've had in ages. Okay, the only reason we do that is so we can have Kidelka have a bunch of um, HP. Now we can go onwards. Literally, the only purpose of that grind session is to make sure that Kidelka has a bunch of vitality. Okay. Success has been achieved. <laughs> All right. The downside is because I already just in preparation for possibly having to do my backup, uh, I did put points into Vitality on Kidalka, so she's going to be a little bit weaker on her magic, but it, it, sh it should be fine. <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. I think this is the first time I've had Kadelka have over a thousand HP during a speed run in God months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing to remember to do during this fight is make sure that James has the bow gun equipped, because we are going to soon come to the mo the second most annoying boss fight in this game. The most annoying boss fight definitely goes to the one almost at the end of the game called Apostle, but the one coming up in a minute here, also a pain in the butt. But uh, I'll, t I'll tell you more about that guy when we get a little bit closer to him. Oh no. <laughs> okay, thankfully I got some RNG Panaceas so we can get rid of that silence on Kadelka because that is the last thing you want. He have a, okay, he has a bow and arrow already. Okay. This is one of the few times that you actually attack with Edward, with the exception of the boss fight directly coming up. And the only reason I did that is because Kadelka is not powerful enough to be able to two shot this enemy yet. But you always, with the bow gun weapons, you don't have to do this with the gun as optimal, with the bow gun, you have to reload after every single shot with it. It's very powerful, but it's annoying to use. <laughs> um, if I recall, the reason why the any percent category does not use... Okay, yeah, he's still not dead. The reason the um, any percent category does not use the no pendant ending is because the no pendant ending is not an ending, technically. It's a game over. It's a non-standard game over. So the speedrun doesn't use the no pendant ending. Even though it would be something like 15 minutes faster, 10 to 15. Okay. Okay, one more safety save. Now, when, if you're 
learning the speed run, you can save at any temporary save or permanent save that you come across. But generally, when I was learning the run, I just saved at the permanent save points. Not for any particular reason, it's just annoying to be saving so much. Yes, my personal favorite of the endings is definitely the no pendant ending, but that's almost entirely because the entire party gets just melted. <laughs> now, for those who don't know what chat and I are talking about in terms of the no pendant ending, if we actually watch the intro cutscene, you would see that Kadelka dropped a pendant as she was climbing over the walls of the monastery to get inside of it. That pendant is only shows up during that one cutscene, and the third to last FMV in the game, so just before the final boss fight. Yet, if you don't grab that pendant at a very specific point in the game, you cannot actually beat the game unless you happen to get a lucky drop from an enemy right at the end of the game. So you have to either get really lucky on RNG or you have to make sure you pick it up when it shows it to you later in the game. So that can be one really annoying thing about this game, which is a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. Now it's time for the most annoying boss fight in this game. This is against Elias. In the FMV that I just skipped, he dropped a chandelier on us and tried to get us killed. Now he is attacking us. The reason why he is so annoying is he is entirely immune to magic, and guess who the only thing Arculas Cannon can use is? Magic. Which is rather annoying. Now he has a very set attack pattern. He will always attack Kadelka, Edward, then James, Kadelka, Edward, James, Kadelka, Edward, James, I think. It's either that or it's Kadelka, James, Edward. I can't remember which. But for this fight, you want to have Kadelka attacking one of the barricades and Edward attacking the other. Because those two barricades that are standing up there, you cannot actually attack the boss as long as those are up. So not only is he immune to magic, he is also immune to attacks until these barricades go away. Because reasons. <laughs> Yes, theoretically, at the end of the game, the pendant can drop from... I think it drops from the black cats in the second to last green before you get the non-standard game over. Theoretically, it can drop from an enemy if you didn't pick it up earlier. Come on, James. James? Okay. He wasn't behaving. Sounds like Clock Tower with their endings. Uh, not so much, but I can sort of see why you'd think that. Oh wait, why was I skipping Edwards? Okay. Now we're gonna wait for Kadelka's spell to go off. In order to take down the other barricade. Which hopefully because I hit it with James, it should. Oh, ah, there we go. Now we can actually attack the boss. So for the rest of this fight, Kadelka and James are completely useless. Because the only one who can do damage to the enemy, functionally, is um, Edward. Which is rather annoying because this guy takes about four hits to kill. And every other... Um, turn with him, you have to reload your gun. Come on, game. Work with me here. Three, I think. Oh. Right. 
this should be enough. There it goes. <laughs> Okay. We're back on track now. Now, in the cutscene where the chandelier got dropped on me, I ran past it, and if you guys were paying attention, you saw that I picked something up called Daniel's Arm. That item is an instance of this game's love of throwing items down, not telling you that they're there, and then punishing you if you don't pick them up later. Because if you don't pick up that item, and if you don't know it's there, you cannot get to disc four. <laughs> or you cannot get further than disc four. <laughs> Which is mildly annoying. So we just talked to that guy, and he's totally just slumped there. He's absolutely fine, chat. He, he's fine. He, he's fine. He totally didn't get shot during that cutscene. No, he's fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Yeah. That cutscene is another example of all of the main characters just constantly arguing with each other. And then Edward just decided to shoot the or shoot the boss and he's just he's just taking a nap. So now we're all the way back at the beginning of the game. We just did a full circle. How many discs are there? There are Four. The speed run's only about two, two-ish hours long, but yes, there is four discs. And the reason is that there is four discs, despite there being, um, despite there being just not that much in terms of length to the game, is pretty interesting, actually. The reason why there is four discs isn't, is sort of because this game has a lot of FMV sequences, but most of the reason is because this game is entirely voice acted and mo -capped. So there was no, um, no, every animation you see in this game was done by actors. And because of that, it means that they had to use a lot of place, because remember, this is a PlayStation game. They had to use a lot of disk space just for that. All right, so I just picked up that badge. That is just an accessory that you're gonna throw on James later in order to make him actually useful. And I picked up, I'm gonna be picking up these items just for puzzles later. This game has a very Resident Evil style of pick up these puzzles, throw them at doors, and then they're unlocked. So this item here is very important for a speed run. You don't need it, it's not required, but the mask reduces your encounter rate by half. So the two things that really affect your encounter rate and how many random battles you get into are the mask and your luck. So now that I have that, I should get into less random encounters, which is good because you want to run away from all random encounters except for that one section earlier that I was having a hard time getting that chainmail. And if you get into a fight with an enemy called Mars or a black cat. So um, cat lovers, you better hope I never get into a random encounter against a black cat. Cause it will just be a they will just be a little kitty. And they happen to drop the most powerful mage item, mage equipment in the game. So if you come across one, you kinda have to take care of it. But again, because it is random battles, I've only come across it once or twice in all of my run-throughs. Okay, now that I picked up all of those items, we are going to go all the way back to where we had that boss fight against Elias. <laughs> oh, wait, no, actually, I lied. <laughs> There's one other thing we have to do that I forgot, almost forgot. <laughs> we have to go to Elias's hideout to get something first. It was a door that I passed by earlier, but the key that we picked up after the Elias boss fight lets us get into it. Okay, so here's the room where we did the grinding earlier.
We're summoning the Elder Crimson Head? We are not. That is a Resident Evil thing. Okay. So I used the key that I got from the boss and uh, got into a random fight because this game decided it wanted to have random fights. So we needed this for later. And the game will not actually let you leave this room unless you look at this random bit of wall. I don't know why, because it doesn't force you to look at the other half of the puzzle solution, but it won't let you leave the room unless you look at that piece of wall. Apparently it's a very interesting piece of wall. So this little bit of pixels here is an item we have to pick up that it wouldn't let us pick up earlier for some reason. How are you supposed to know that that's there? Mm hmm. Reasons. In fact, the game probably wants you to just run around like a chicken with your head cut off until you start clicking on random bits of pixel until you realize there's an item there to pick up. Okay, now we are going in the right direction. <laughs> After that little bit of backtracking, when you go through the door by Elias, you'll be able to see why I had to pick up the music box. Now, I know the puzzle solution coming up in this room, but the game actually won't let you do it unless you have the music box and unless you looked at a little bit of random wool. I, do I know why? Absolutely not. But the puzzle solution is... This. Ah! Okay. If you run on the wrong pixel, it won't um, activate, and sometimes it won't activate just because it doesn't like you. Mostly because of this diagonal right here. There we go. Okay, here's another one of those shards. We're actually going to be using those pretty soon. Now, for those who know this game, might be wondering whether or not I'm going to be rescuing the ghost named Charlotte. In order to do that, you have to do a little bit of extra stuff to get some uh, letters to give to the poor little ghost girl that you guys didn't see because I skipped that cutscene. Sadly, we will not be doing that because even though it allows you to skip a boss fight, it takes time and we don't like wasting time here. So GG, poor ghost girl, we're not going to rescue her because that takes time. All right, so we watched a cutscene of Kidalka having a migraine. And now we're gonna pick up a little thing. Okay. So those are some of the items that I picked up earlier, just sitting on tables and stuff. And now we're gonna have another boss fight. This boss fight is just like most of the ones in this game. Throw Kidalka at it until it dies. Because... She's just that cool. I mean, the game is named after her, so. Can I just mention that this game has some very grotesque uh, character designs, <laughs> enemy designs? <laughs> okay, so that's 16. Okay, so it's gonna take. So Kadalka got poisoned, but we are not going to actually care about that because the only time that we care if Kadalka gets a status effect is if she gets silenced. <laughs> she, she can have poison, it's fine.
Now, you guys may like the fight music in this game, but just you wait until we get to the, some of the final fights. Because for most of the game, there's only really the one battle music. Um, but then we get to the end of the game, and that's the only time, really, that the boss fight music changes. Well, this is fine. Poison, paralysis, this this is fine. Oh good! <laughs> they silenced Kadelka, great. <laughs> this is fine. Okay, now I have actually an excuse to heal her. This should be enough to kill it. Hey, success. Woo! <laughs> now, usually that enemy should only take you two hits, but it took me three hits this time almost entirely because I'm not getting very good RNG today. Oh, well, this is fine. So you pretty much never do anything but Vitality for Edward at this point in the game. <laughs> okay. So I'll save after this cutscene. So you want to go look in this random corner. The game does not tell you to look there. It just wants you to look in this random corner to trigger a cutscene. So believe it or not, we are getting relatively close to the end of disc two. It's Already? just gonna, yeah, it's just gonna take me having to run around and put a couple of items away and um, meet the most amazing character in all of Shadow Hearts and Kidult history, and then end of the disc. Oh, is that all? Yeah, just that. <laughs> so who loves history? Do you love history? I love history. History is yeah. fun. So this game very much likes to bring real world history into the game. So does anybody know the great Roger Bacon? It is he is a figure from history who is well known, if I remember correctly, as like an inventor and philosopher. He did a lot of stuff. Um, in this game, he is an immortal wizard man who is stick thin and walks around like Gollum and talks like he's about 50% insane. And we will be meeting him very soon. This is an example of Kidalka just not wanting to go through a doorway. I don't know why, sometimes she just doesn't like to go through the event triggers. <laughs> and this game may be very good, but some parts of it can be a touch rough. Okay. So the puzzle that's coming up in this next room is one of those listen to the sound, replicate the sound puzzles. And one of the reasons why you needed the music box. Uh, I don't know music, so I'm just going to do the solution. <laughs> because I happen to just know what it is. <laughs> okay, no cutscenes. We don't do cutscenes here, they're slow. 
Thankfully, this is a PlayStation game that actually lets you skip cutscenes. Including this one. So, the person in the casket there is Roger Bacon. I wish I could show you guys the cutscenes because everything that comes out of that man's mouth is pure gold. But he is currently, as far as the main characters know, um, a mummy in a coffin who just shouted at them and then went to sleep. Classic Roger. Classic. Yeah, classic Roger. Now, if you've ever played Shadow Hearts, if you ever played Shadow Hearts and then didn't beat Shadow Hearts, then you may be confused about that Roger Bacon. Now, the only thing I can say about that is um, go finish Shadow Hearts because it's a great game. And you should you should see why the Roger Bacon is sort of different in that game. All right, we are almost at the end of disc two. I just have to go a couple more screens over. There's no more boss fights, sort of. <laughs> I'll explain when we get there. Kadaka, please move. Okay. Sometimes Kadaka also decides she just doesn't want to run. Oh, right. I have to go do that. I actually have to finish the puzzle before I can go through the doorway. <laughs> so all of those glass pieces that I've been picking up from the floor and from various bosses, they go in here. Now the game's going to tell you, hey, there was the little puzzle thing earlier in a box. Are you going to go open that? You should go open that. We're not going to open that because that takes time and we are slow. Or we don't want to be slow, because slow is bad, because this is a speed run. Okay, the game won't let you leave the cathedral normally. It forces you to go up to watch an FMV before it lets you turn around and leave. So we're going to do that, and then it will be the end of disc two. Oh no, spooky FMV. And we skip that, because that's slow. Now, our characters are just trying to figure out what's going on in this cathedral, mansion, manor, prison, complex place. Now, as they're going through here, they get attacked by a massive gargoyle, and Kadilka gets separated from her party. She is now alone, and will be alone for, hmm, first, third to half of disc three? And we're not going to fight this guy, we're just going to run. That's why it's not technically a boss fight. It doesn't even use the boss fight music, I don't think. But yes, we just run away from him because he attacked us and we don't like him. He's also a optional super boss that we can defeat later, but we don't because it's slow. And we are at the end of disc two. All right. Awesome. Well, we are going to take this as an opportunity to get a little stretch break going as we get ready for the back half of the game. So uh, feel free, you know, get up, get a snack, get something to drink, whatever it is you need to do. And we will be back here in just a few short minutes with the second half of the game.
All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Awfully Silly, uh, the spooky, awfully spooky edition, of course. We are going to be continuing on with Kudelka here, so let's get the timer back going in three, two, one, and go. So, so we are now alone. We no longer have our meat shield that is Edward, which is probably the most scary part of the game. Now, because I managed to actually get a chain mail, it should be fine. So from a bunch of the boss fights that we have come across so far, if you guys have noticed in the reward screen, I got access to things called like Icon's crown, Icon's necklace, Icon's ring. This entire section is us going and putting those items that we got from those boss fights on all of these statues. Now, if you get good RNG, you can get out of here without getting into a single random encounter. <laughs> and of course, the second I say that. <laughs> of course, the second I say that. Mm hmm. I swear, this game hates me today. It just absolutely hates me. <laughs> But yes, the thing that can make this entire section scary is not necessarily the fact that you are in random battles with Kadelka because you just run away from those. The problem is there is a boss fight coming up here where you will have to do the entire boss fight alone. Now, because I have so much more HP than I normally do as Kadelka, it should be fine. But if you're not careful, you can game over here. All right, this is going to be the first time that I ever actually ever actually use a temporary save during this marathon run. Now, they just work like normal saves. Oh, except you can't actually put them on a normal save slot. You have to put them on their own temporary slave slot. They're not actually temporary, if I remember correctly. They, um, oh, they can be used and loaded just like normal saves, but they just don't heal you all the way and you can't use them for getting the special save items. I think that was the last one. I think. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was the last one. So the thing the game never tells you is, hey, look, there's a pendant right here. You can entirely miss this pendant. And I might actually equip that pendant on Kadalka right now. You can entirely miss that pendant. If you don't pick up this pendant, you can't get, you can't finish the game, which is rather annoying. There we go. Okay. Because you don't necessarily have to go over there a single time, because as soon as you put all of those icons items away, where you're supposed to go is through that grate right there. Which is just, I don't know why they did that. They should have made it some drop from a um, boss or something if they wanted to make sure that the player had it. But yeah, you literally cannot finish the game unless you have that pendant. You will always get a game over screen. Oh, also just ignore the guillotine, it's fine. Just, just ignore the guillotine, it's fine. And look, we found the caretakers. They're, they're fine. Don't don't worry about them. They're just taking a nap. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just taking a nap. Why do you need the pendant? Um, because MacGuffin. It, there's not really any good reason for it. 
Kidalka sort of explains that the pendant was a gift from her dad or something. From somebody who was important to her and that it's a magic mystical pendant. That's literally the only reason. There's not really a good reason why you need it. Uh, the game could have entirely left it out and it would have been fine. But yes, you will get a game over right before the final bosses of the game if you don't have that pendant. Also, you can save after the point of no return. And after the point of no return, you can't go back and get the pendants. So you have to rely on it dropping from a random encounter, which is a very low percent drop. So it can soft lock you in the end of the game if you don't know you need to pick up that pendant. As much as I love this game, that is the one stickler in it. Okay, here is the scary part. Because now, every time you play this game, if you see something is not right on the bottom of the screen, it's a boss fight room. And since Kadalka is alone, this is gonna be fun, okay. So the only thing that you need to do is spam Tornado on the enemy. But you also need to make sure you keep an eye on the enemy's HP. Because if he does this and tries to cast a spell, it's good. If he tries to smack you, it's bad, because Kadelka does not like being hit. She can take magic like a champ, but she can't take a punch to the face. I have lost many a run to this fight specifically. Now, it shouldn't be a problem because I made sure Kadelka had about twice the amount of HP I normally have her at at this point, but it can still be a little scary if you are trying to get a good time. Which necessitates you not getting the not necessarily getting the chainmail and not having good stats. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I fat finger that and I accidentally attack instead. That's that's what happens when you accidentally button mash. When you're not supposed to. Now, when I'm normally speedrunning this, not for a marathon, he can kill me in two punches, which is what makes this uh, fight scary because you have to waste time trying to heal your character and trying to get in damage with one character at the same time. Thankfully, I generally know what I'm doing in this game and he's gone now. So our point at the, what we're trying to do at the moment is we're just trying to get back to Edward and James. We don't really know where they are. They told us to meet up with them in the library in one of the cutscenes that I skipped, but we don't know where we are. So we just sort of have to take a roundabout circuitous route to get to them. Now, one interesting thing coming up here in a moment is in this version of the game, in the North American release, there is not an item behind the grave that is coming up right about here. So definitely make sure you pick up this doll here or you won't be able to finish the game. But this grave, you need to pray at it because reasons. But in the PAL version and the Japanese version, I think. I know it's in the PAL version. I think it's in the Japanese as well. Behind that grave is the ultimate weapon for mages. It's called Daniel's Cross, and us Americans don't get to have it. We just don't get it. Which can make the PAL region theoretically faster, but if I remember correctly, the PAL and Japanese versions, definitely the Japanese version, but possibly the PAL version, are much more difficult in the fight in terms of how much damage the enemies do and how much um, HP they have. The walk animation is indeed incredible, and that is because it is mo-capped, as I have brought it before. Every animation in this game, a real person did it, which I find absolutely fascinating because it's a PlayStation game. <laughs> I cannot think of another PlayStation game where all of the animation is mo-capped. 
in terms of the, you know, human characters. <laughs> Including Roger Bacon, which is weird because he, he runs around like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. All right, we go through this door, cutscene starts, and we have Edward and James back. Which is yay! All right, this is the only, this is the beginning of James actually being a useful character. So we are going to equip him with an item we got from a boss fight earlier, the evil horn. I don't have anything I can give him here. But we do have two extra rings we can give him. So he's not as good of, as Kodelka at magic, but now he's at least better. Okay. Now we are going to have to backtrack a ways. So I didn't bring it up when I went past it because to be fair, I actually just forgot. But see if I get into a fight here. No, okay. There was a door that I passed earlier, way, 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 way earlier. Those two dolls that I picked up, the one next to the grave and the one a little bit earlier, those are the keys to that door because there are creepy little ghosts next to that, well, ghosts slash mummies next to that door. And if you try to take the key in their hand to open the door, they get mad at you. So you have to give them their dolls so they, uh, just let you take the key. I don't, I don't know. This game, this game's weird. This game's strange. For a second there, I thought we were going to get into a fight with a black cat because that's the camera angle usually does for that. But yeah, this this part of the game is just a lot of really long backtracking. <laughs> Which hopefully I won't get into a lot of random fights and we can get through it quickly. Yes, we do want a black cat fight. Well, I want a black cat fight. I don't think the chat wants a black cat fight because it involves me killing a kitty. No, we don't want that. <laughs> no. Because it is faster to do so, but on the other hand, it is not something that's very Twitch friendly. <laughs> Because as I said earlier, there are two random fights that even though you run away from most of the random fights in this game, if you get into a fight with a black cat or a Mars enemy, you, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> Just because it's faster than not doing it. Okay, so this is the this is the little mummy that I passed up earlier. So we talk to the mummy, give the mummies their dolls. Now they're happy and they gave Mickey. And this key goes in this room. So earlier when I mentioned that we were, we got into a fight because the little ghost girl decided to throw an enemy at us, we are now on the other side of that wall that we were at during that fight, which means we are now in the realm of the creepy ghost girl. And because I did not do the little extra bit earlier with those broken glass pieces, um, we have two boss fights now. If you've gotten those, if you've done that little extra side quest and gotten a couple extra items, you'd only have one boss fight. But because we did not do that, we get to have two. It also gets to be the first time that, that James actually gets to do something. <laughs> So yes, we are currently having a boss fight against furniture. 
by the way. Furniture is the real horror of this game. I'm gonna be a little quiet here because I'm counting HP. Or I'll just two shot him, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I meant by depending on the RNG values of um, items that you get, you can get absolutely overpowered in this game. <laughs> okay. Because usually I have to count HP to figure out who I want to attack, what, and when. But then Kadalka decided she just wanted to do 4,000 points of damage. Four thousand. And dead. Okay, I guess I'll just two-shot both of them. I <laughs> that's happened, I will play a little bit of this cutscene just so you can see the creepy ghost girl. That is the creepy ghost girl. Normally you can save the creepy ghost girl if you do the extra side quest. We did not do that. So instead, we have to fight the creepy ghost girl, except now she looks like something out of Silent Hill. I mean, the game's a little dark, so you can't see it that well, but sh that, tr trust me, she looks like something out of Silent Hill. And this entire boss fight is just spam geyser. Spam geyser and skip Edward's turn because he's no longer important in this game. Poor Edward. Yeah, he just gets to be a wall. He's literally just a wall to prevent um, physical attacks against James and Kadalka. He can Walls be a little bit important. helpful later, but still. Walls are important. They're the foundation, so. <laughs> still helping in, in his own way, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> in a way. In a way. How do you get the bad ending? You get the bad ending by dying to the final boss fight. And I and I don't want to call it the bad ending because this game's weird. The good ending where you defeat the final boss is um not the bet it's not the most satisfying ending. It's not a satisfying ending and it's not meant to be a satisfying ending. But the canon ending, the one that actually goes into Shadow Hearts is the bad ending that comes from dying to the final boss. Which is the ending that we will be getting here. But yeah, Charlotte. I've never really seen Charlotte move forward unless you start losing uh, party members. So this is pretty much just spam, 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 and she's done. Mostly because of Kadalka. Mm, I'll start putting some mind. So leveling up in this game can be... Mm, it's kind of up to you how exactly you level up the characters. For James and Kadalka, you want to put most of their points into intelligence and agility up to a certain point in which, and after having about 40 agility, you switch to then upgrading their intelligence and their mind, which I could explain why, but that involves a lot of math and I'm lazy. Okay, uh, that and the pendant, okay. So I'm just doing a little bit of inventory management to make sure that I am prepared for the fights coming up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now that that's done with. How does the giant monster or monster body appear? Reasons. This game doesn't have any logic. It's an RPG. RPGs don't have logic. Oh, so that disc I picked up ages and ages ago, it goes here. 
This is another instance of if you didn't know to pick it up when you went past it, you're going to have to backtrack a long ways to get to it. Which is one of the reasons why this game can take a while. Or it can take two hours. <laughs> and we have another boss fight. This is just boss fight to boss fight to boss fight. Okay, here I'm gonna sort of cheat. Normally I wouldn't do this, but just for sake of my sanity I'm going to, because the weapon that James currently has equipped, the evil horn, it can it's a reach weapon. And because the game defaults to physical attacks instead of magic when you're doing the menuing, it can be really annoying and I have accidentally physically attacked enemies with James before instead of using magic. So just for my own sanity, I'll move him for this fight. Oh, also one thing to know about this game, the positioning of Kadelka is very much on purpose because you want to have her directly behind Edward because it prevents him from getting pushed backwards. And if you prevent Edward from getting pushed backwards, then he can just be a nice little happy little wall for the other characters and he can never get pushed past them by getting knocked back. However, if he dies, enemies can move past him. And if an enemy moves past, if an enemy moves past a character that has been downed, they can no longer be revived. So that can lead to some instances where you just have a cascade of failure that ends in a game over. Because once an enemy moves past a down character, you can't revive them. And then it, they just keep moving up and up and up. And then you end up having an enemy in Kadelka's face and they hit her and she dies. Which is not something that we want. Oh, and by the way, this, en this enemy is called Jezebel. Everyone say hi to Jezebel. Hi, Jezebel. <laughs> A lot of the enemies in this game have very biblical references. The game in general has a lot of biblical references to it. In the fact that James is a priest, they have references to the Vatican and a lot of the cutscenes. In fact, James is a priest sent by the Vatican to this specific monastery. Um, and a lot of the enemies are named like Jezebel, Apostle, things like that. He's getting, he's getting, he's getting weak here. Yeah, he can only take one more hit, okay. Do I have an item? Oh. Oh, well, this could be bad. <laughs> it's, I'm sure this is fine. The one so downside of Edward being just a brick house of a man is uh, he goes down really quickly to magic. Well, relatively quickly. And because he's in front, he tends to get hit more often with magic. So you do have to watch out on his HP because that, that, that's a lot of damage. Like, instead of attacking here, I'm going to heal Edward. Oh, or it doesn't matter because Kadelka is just an absolute, absolute powerhouse of a character and just killed the enemy. Okay. So strong. So strong. Most strong. Most strong. So you can see that I was upgrading mind instead of upgrading agility there. Now, the reason for that is mind and dexterity are really weird in this game. The, the manual says that dexterity and mind are sort of your hit chance ones. So it's like how accurate you are with your attacks. That's not actually what they do though. 
and you never upgrade, you never really upgrade dexterity except once or twice with Edward in the very beginning of the speed run. But you do want to upgrade mind with um, the other two characters. And what it actually does is it doesn't really affect the hit chance. It's sort of a catch-all magic. It helps with damage. It helps with crit chance. It helps with defense. So you never upgrade piety in the game, but you do upgrade mind because it's sort of just a catch-all helpful stat. And mind isn't really as useful because with the items and equipment that you tend to get in the game, you just use that for it instead. <laughs> Instead of going to the door, I just ran into a wall. Oh, hey, a cat! Everyone, it's a black cat! <laughs> <laughs> Chat, I am so sorry. I am so sorry for this. <laughs> oh, no. Chat, I am so sorry. <laughs> Oh, I didn't, it didn't die. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll have to hit it again. <laughs> oh, the poor kitty ran into a corner. Uh, the kitty has red eyes. It's obviously possessed by a demon. This is okay. <laughs> this is totally okay, you guys. It's possessed, it's obviously possessed by a demon. It has red demon eyes. <laughs> Whatever you gotta tell yourself, you know? <laughs> and there goes the kitty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the reason why you have to... The reason why you have to kill the cat if you end up getting into a random fight with the cat is it has a chance to drop an item called Cat's Eye. Oh. I'll finish my explanation after this. <laughs> oh, that didn't even get the item. I just killed it for nothing. <laughs> so, um, the reason why, if you ever get into a random encounter with the black cat, why you have to kill the black cat is because it can drop an item called Cat's Eye. The Cat's Eye, oh, Kadelka, behave. Um, the Cat's Eye is the most powerful mage type weapon. In the, in the speed run. It's not technically the most powerful mage type weapon at all, but it's the most powerful one you have available to you during the speed run. And if you grab, if you get one of those and you can equip it on um, James or Kidalka, it pretty much makes the rest of the game a cakewalk. So I'm sorry, chat, I, it had to be done. <laughs> I didn't even get the item for it, but it had to be done. If, it, if I had gotten the item, it would have been worth it, I swear. Okay, there's Roger again. The one thing that I don't that isn't mo capped in this game is like enemy is um enemy um animations. So that's one of the so thankfully the cat dying was not mo capped as far as I know. They have to enter and exit this room twice in order to trigger two different cutscenes because I've met the requirements for both cutscenes, but they can't play them both at once. So this is this is Roger. I'm just gonna show you guys Roger for just a second. So you guys can see how awesome he is. And then we're going to skip the rest of the cutscene. Hey, Mr. Bacon. Bacon's great. We love bacon. That's weird to say because I'm a vegan. But... Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did just kill a cat, though. Oh, man. I am, oh, boy, I am the world's, world's worst vegan. Yes, chat, there is indeed bunnies behind me. Their names are Garrus and Tally. Okay, we have to go look at these books. Because reasons. It says hearth in Greek. Because unless we look at that, we can't do something later. As per usual with this game. So we need a bottle. Thankfully, there's a bottle right here. Okay. Now it's time for backtracking 2.0. Because that bottle I picked up, we have to fill it with acid. The problem is, the acid is all the way back 
a couple screens past where I used those dolls to open that door earlier. <laughs> this game does like to does love to make you backtrack. Thankfully, in a speed run, we've got it down to the point where you don't have to backtrack too much compared to how much you would have to backtrack if you, for instance, forgot to grab the disc or forgot to grab some of the other items. There we go. Game is behaving for once. Excellent. I'm kind of dreading the, ne the next boss fight that's coming up here. For those who know Kidelka, there is one boss fight that whether or not you're playing it casually or you're playing it um, in a speed run is the bane of your existence. This is a boss called Apostle. Now, I will explain it more when we get to it, but needless to say, this boss can either take you about 30 seconds or it can take you 10 minutes. There is no middle ground. Yes, I do speed run a lot of sort of niche and rarer horror games. The ones that I'm most well known for is probably Fatal Frame 3 and Kuon. Which I will be playing Kuon at AGDQ next month, by the way. <clears throat> cough, cough. You know, when I planned this episode, I didn't, I didn't on purpose choose two runners who were going to be in AGDQ <laughs> just a few weeks later, but it was a happy coincidence, I will say that. I got my runner shirt in just before, uh, just before stream. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the uh, social medias uh, lighten up with some of those shirts. They look awesome. Yes. <laughs> All right, and just like usual, we run away from the fights. Except for the one or two times we don't want to run away from the fights. <laughs> so the reason that the boss fight against the Apostle enemy is so annoying is it is an enemy that every single thing that hits it will heal it when it is doing a certain idle animation. So if it's doing a specific type of idle animation, you can't attack it. But the problem is when it's charging its own attacks, it does a different animation but you don't know what idle animation it's doing outside of the animation for preparing to attack. So half of the time you don't know if the attack that you're going to do against it will heal it or hurt it. It is the largest time seek and the most annoying part of this entire run. See if I can remember. This is yes, no, no, yes. You want all of those guys to be facing forward in order to open the door. Because this game loves having non standard keys for doors. Okay. I am going to try one strat really quick. I'm only going to try it once or twice. In this room, you can get into a fight with an enemy called Mars. And that enemy drops an item called Scroll. If you get a elemental scroll that is anything but air, you can one shot the apostle boss, which is the reason why it can take either 30 seconds or 10 minutes. Now, I'm just going to try it a couple times, mostly because I hate the apostle boss so much. And the apostle boss could be a reason why we go overestimate. Because in addition to the bad RNG I got earlier, the Apostle boss really is that annoying. Now it is about a one, it, it's, it's a 50% chance getting into a fight to get a scroll. 
So theoretically, in two to three fights, I should at least have a chance. And I'll only try it once just because of time, but... Now this is sort of the downside of having the mask item, the mask key item that has your encounter rate. <laughs> Okay, the one on the left. The one on the left is the enemy we need to kill. I think it's Flare he doesn't like. No. If you look at my hands, I'm actually keeping my hands specifically away from the triangle button right now because I have accidentally run away from these fights before. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of sheer muscle memory. Theoretically, I could run away at this point, but I am going to kill the other enemy just for XP sake. Oh, I didn't mean to wait on her. Oops. <laughs> I need everybody to cross their fingers and hope that I actually get the item after we finish this fight. Because <laughs> if not, it's going to add another 10, approximately 8 to 10 minutes to the run. <laughs> Alright, come on. Give us that sweet, sweet good RNG. you <laughs> oh my god thank you okay so we got a fire scroll and now even if you got a scroll if it was an air scroll it would um you couldn't use it because the enemy is also just immune to air damage because it was a fire scroll we're fine <laughs> okay Whew. we can breathe now i just have to not use it wrong Okay, hold on to your bots. It's not out of the woods yet. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> We're good. Okay. That is the... Outside of the part where you're alone with Kadalka and having to do a boss fight with just her, that is the most stressful part of this game. Of all parts of this game, that is the most stressful part. Also, he gives you a boatload of uh, experience. <laughs> Whew. Okay, everything's good now. <laughs> this there is one more minorly um, scary part later coming up in a moment here, but we are just about at the end of disc four, by the way. So, disc four is the last one, so we are almost there. That went... I, I was I was stressing. Because I, <laughs> I did not want to be the person who goes over estimate, but with all the bad RNG we got earlier, if I hadn't gotten that scroll, we were for sure going over estimate. RNG taketh away, but then it giveth. Yeah.
All right, and disc three is done. Yeah, most of the XP you get in this game is not going to be from random fights, which is the reason why in the speedrun you only... You theoretically don't have to do any grinding, but there is that one point where it is a good idea to do some grinding just to make it easier and safer later. But most of the XP in this game comes from the boss fights, which is why after a boss fight you generally level up two to three times per character. Alright, we are now on disc four. We are officially in endgame. Now, I'm very sad that I'm skipping all of the cutscenes here because there is a cutscene coming up here in a second that's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Because Edward and Kadelka, while James is making nitroglycerin in order to blow up the door that we just were near, that was locked, they get drunk. They decide while James is messing with chemicals to create a bomb... Kadelka and Edward are going to just have drinks next to a fire and have a good old heart-to-heart. -heart. It's the best cutscene in the entire game, and I'm sad that we had to skip it. But <laughs> if you ever play this game yourself, you are going to be in for a treat, because, God, oh, that cutscene is so good. Especially because it's all mocap, so you know that some at some point, somewhere, there was a couple people covered in those suits with all those little balls on them having to pretend like they're completely plastered. All right, we now have the bomb. Okay. And with that bomb, we are going to go through a doorway. And in that doorway will be a giant plant. Because this game has plants. Giant, giant demon plants. So one thing in the story that, because we've been skipping the cutscenes, hasn't really been seen, is our characters at this point have discovered that all of the demons and all of the messed up things happening in this monastery slash prison slash everything is because James's old friend from his college days married a woman named Elaine. Now, Elaine was the love of both James and this guy named Patrick. But unbeknownst to James until about halfway through the game, um, a third of the way through the game, is that at some point, Elaine was killed during a home invasion. And the, it was a little while after they moved into the Nementon Monastery. Now, Patrick went sort of insane, as evidenced by the fact that the entire place is now covered in monsters, and he decided he was going to try to resurrect his wife using something called the Emigre Document. It was currently hiding in the Vatican. And that's where James come, comes in because it got stolen from the Vatican and taken to Patrick. And I'm just going to do a, a puzzle real quick before I finish the explanation. There we go. Okay. So Patrick got a hold of this emigre document and it had a whole bunch of secret black magic spells and things like that in it. And he decided he was going to try to resurrect his dead wife. And as we discovered in another cutscene where you actually get to talk to Elaine's ghost, she just sort of lays it out and says, yeah, um, Patrick totally resurrected my body, did not resurrect the soul in the body. So now there is a creepy demon Elaine currently being ensconced in a giant flower that we will have to take care of. And that is what we are headed to do now. So the moral of the story is don't do black magic and um, leave things in the Vatican. <laughs> this game has a very strange story. Okay. So this is the point of no return. The little tiny Daniel's arm thing that fell off of the um, chandelier way back at the beginning of disc two, if you did not grab that, you would have to run around the entire monastery trying to find it because that's what you need to throw into this vat. You throw this random desiccated arm that's apparently the arm of a saint into this vat and it causes everything to explode and the entire monastery to get set on fire. Why does it do that? I have no idea. <laughs> but it does it! So now everything's on fire and we are in the endgame. game. 
All right. So these bosses are actually more scary than the final boss. So I'm going to focus a little bit here because these bosses can very easily overwhelm you. And there's two of them in quick succession. The reason why they're scary is that they can do a lot of repeated attacks, physical attacks very quickly, and they, if they are able to do enough that they take down Edward, they immediately move past him, which prevents you from reviving him. each have about 5,000 XP or HP, so. Casting magic if he's from the Vatican. He's a very special kind of priest. <laughs> he's a very special kind of priest. They mo the Funky Tree animations? Yes, they mo all the animations for the people. I'm actually going to move Kadelka back up because she got knocked back a bit. Thankfully, these guys are tree roots, so their elemental weakness is fire. So all we have to do is just rapidly attack until we kill them. That is the dangerous attack, because that attack can even almost completely um, one-shot Edward. Because you can see, he only has 40 HP. So I would have been in very big trouble had that done another 40 more hits of damage to him. I have people who can heal and because James hardly has pretty much has zero or Edward has pretty much zero piety he almost gets entirely healed from one heal so at least that's at least that's a silver lining
Boy, I cannot just, I cannot get a break with the RNG today. <laughs> <laughs> this used game it knows. All up. Yeah, I used it all up getting that scroll for Apostle. Mm -hmm. Good God. <laughs> You know what, James, we're, we're going to a backup strat. James, you are now on healing duty. <laughs> Ooh, okay, one of them's dead. <laughs> we should be fine. The, prob the problem is, is if you have multiple of them up. Yeah, because what, um, if there's only one of them left, they usually move backwards in order to get away from you. So we should be good now. <laughs> Now, you guys may have seen there that something popped up on screen that said something like Kadalka's magic level went up. Um, this game actually does have progression for magic and for your weapons. The problem is, is because we're going so quickly in the speed run, it generally doesn't matter in this, um, in the speed run. Though, usually Kadalka's flare ability will usually, at about this point, go up by one. Now, what that does is it doubles the, um, XP, or the, doubles the MP cost, but it also doubles-ish the, um, hold on, doubles-ish the amount of damage it does, and if there are multiple enemies next to each other, it can hit multiple enemies at once, which is what you saw during the last flare that I used. Oh, that was, that was, that was a rough fight. That can be both a good and a bad thing, because now, because that flare went up one level, I should not use that during the final fights. Because if I do, there's a very good chance that I could run out of MP on Kadelka, which is very, very rough. All right, so they all leveled up, so they should all be full healed. Now, I usually don't use this, but I did see that I got a oh, an agility idol. I want to use that on Kadelka. Now, I'm just using doing this for safety because it's helpful during the final fight. You normally don't have to do that. What those items do is that they give you just some more of that stat. That's it. And you want to have Kadelka have a little bit more agility for something that's going to be coming up during the final fight. Now here we go with another mini boss against some more absolutely terrifying little vine enemies. Thankfully, there's only two. Downside, the one with the body behind it has twice the HP of the other ones and hits harder. but I'm going to make sure they take out the other one first just to make it so there's only one of them because then it makes it easier. It's when there's multiple of these guys that get scary. Well, it's been a while since something's actually missed. This game is bare. It's beautiful for a PlayStation 1 game. I agree. He should only take one more flare attack to kill. Sometimes this game also involves a little bit of trying to keep track of HP in your head. Especially because of this enemy. Specifically because of this enemy, because he is a pain. Now the body that is ensconced inside that enemy creature, that is Patrick. The husband of Elaine, the one who tried to revive her, and the one who caused the entire mess in all of these monsters in the monastery. So, it's all his fault.
Okay, now this fight should be much, much easier. I always find that this fight to be much less of a headache than the other one because of the fact that there's only two of them. The downside is it does a lot more damage. This can, this might be a little scary. <laughs> this might be a little scary. For safety reason, <laughs> I'm just gonna put James back on heal duty because I do not trust this enemy. <laughs> It's okay. I have I have sort of a backup strat here. All right. We're going to move her behind James cuz I can sort of use the bodies as a weird um uh shield if that makes sense. It is sort of a backup strat that you can do. Now, because the enemy has moved past James, or past Edward's body, I can't revive him. Which I'm going to focus a little bit because this is, this is, this is scary. You got this, you got this. Oh, okay. <laughs> He had, he had less, H, or less HP than I thought he did. <laughs> I was sweating a little there. Funnily enough, is it's more... This, those fights are more scary than... Um, hold on, than the entire final fights. All of the final fights. That Those fights are the scary ones. Do I have everybody full health? No. Okay. okay, we are about to go into the final fights. Now, if you didn't have the pendant here, then you would have to get it from a random drop, and it is a very rare random drop, or you'd have to load a previous save. There is... You can't over... I can't remember if there is a permanent save point on disc four in this area, but there is a temporary one. And thankfully you can't save over a permanent save with a temporary one, but you can theoretically soft lock yourself. Now I'm going to save here just for safety. Cause even though these fights are generally more consistent than the root fights, they are still very, they can still be scary. Okay. <laughs> You see that giant flower there, chat? That is the flower that houses Elaine. Or the body of Elaine. That it will be birthed in the cutscene that happens right here. Now, at this point, if you did not have the pendant, you would game over. But because I have the pendant and because I got it earlier, instead, 
Elaine bursts out of that little sh flower thing and starts chasing us up this tower. You can't see it because it's an RPG, but she just caught up to student attack. So you have two boss fights against normal Elaine. They are pretty much the same, except her elemental weaknesses switch. Also, just bask in the glory that does this music real quick, because it is the best music in this game. All right, for this one, now this is a different strategy. Instead of actually attacking the enemy outright, you're going to cast Reflect on James and um, Kidalka. Now, the reason why you need to do this is because Elaine hits like a truck and has a lot of HP. So we're going to use that against her because by casting Reflect on ourselves, we are going to reflect the damage from her magic back onto her and it will generally do more damage quicker than actually attacking her with magic. Now you've got to keep an eye on it because Reflect only lasts for so long. But, oh, and also you can't use physical attacks, so James is, or Edward is completely useless in this fight. You can use physical attacks in the next fight, you just can't use them in this one. Elaine needs to work on her posture. Um, she ha She's a little double jointed right now, let's just say that. I, I wish I could have shown you guys the FMV, but she's she's got some, she's got some problems. <laughs> okay, so now here we are going to wait. Come on. Okay, self reflect. Okay. Now we were specifically waiting for her to start casting, and then we were going to cast. Uh, um, for safety reasons, I'll cast tornado, just because I don't want to end up running out of each or MP during the fight. Okay, there you go. She took 2,000 damage from her own attack. Okay, we still got Reflect. Now, James is less useful in this fight. It's mostly up to Kadelka because she still has much higher stats than James does. So just for safety's reasons, I guess we'll heal Edward. Reflect. Come on, Elaine. I still have it. Now I'm double checking to make sure I still have Reflect because Reflect only lasts for so many terms and we need to make sure that I have it. Okay, we still have it. Because I was waiting for her to attack in order to attack her. Because you're sort of gaming her AI in order to have her attack us in order to damage herself. There we go. And when she starts shaky, shaky dancing like this, you know she's close to death. So shaky, shaky dance means she's close to uh, close to the fight being over. And the reason that you do this, do it this way, is order to get through the fight as quickly as possible without having to recast reflect. That actually went really well. I'm kind of scared. And now we have to do that fight, pretty much the same fight again. I forgot to heal. Uh, I list all on Kidalka. Okay. The second fight is the same, except now Edward can actually attack her. And, um the elemental weaknesses ship. So you do the same thing, except instead of casting Tornado, you cast either Megalith or Geyser, which is earth or water attacks. After, of course, casting Reflect.
Edward can't do much, but he he thinks he helps. <laughs> he tries his best. Tries he his tries. Best. He's trying. He tries his best, but even though you even though she's not immune to physical attack, she has an extremely high vitality stat. <laughs> so she's functionally useless. I'm gaming the AI again, the same way I did in the last um, in the last fight. Yes, I got a double hit. Okay, <laughs> that's good RNG. Because usually, um, at least either the hit against Kadelko or the hit against James will miss. It's relatively rare for both of them to hit. That was actually pretty good RNG. For now. <laughs> okay. Okay, Elaine's doing her shaky shaky dance, so you know that she's close to dead. Now, I'm not healing Edward on purpose there, and I'll explain it as soon as we finish the fight. Okay, the reason we're not healing Edward, and I'm not going to heal any of the other characters, is we want to die in the last fight as quickly as possible, because time will be... At the last um, attack against the last um, party member. So as soon as the last party member dies, it's time. Because we are getting the bad ending, which involves losing to the final fight. Which happens now. And it can take anywhere from a minute, 30 seconds, to about a minute and a half. Because all we are doing is waiting until she kills us. <laughs> Which could take only one hit, could take two. If she attacks the magic, it should only take one. Okay, you're gonna wanna get ready on time. Ah, she only did attack on one, okay. So it's gonna take a little bit longer because we have to wait for her to kill the other two. Because she moves slowly. Because she can't do an attack that attacks everybody at once, and if she does that- see? That's the reason why it's really, really hard to fight this final boss. If she does the attack her first time that attacks every single enemy- or any, every single character at once, the fight's over in 30 seconds. And time. Ooh. GG. Whew. How bad was it? <laughs> um... Pretty, you're, you are going to be underestimate, for sure. Woo! <laughs> 229.45. Oh, so. barely! <laughs> yeah, still, still counts, though. Still yeah. counts. <laughs> I had to fight for it. So, in this ending, James pretty much gives up his own life to take out the boss. So, in the ending where you defeat the boss, he survives. In the canon ending, which is the one that goes into Shadow Hearts, he dies. But, yeah. GG! <laughs> yeah, GG's. Any uh, any last plugs or shoutouts you want to do before we uh, get ready um, to transition over to our next show? Shout out to Regina Marie on Instagram. She is my friend from high school who technically uh, is the one that I stole this game from back in high school about mm, 15 years ago. <laughs> um, I apologize, Gina. You can't have it back. It's mine now. <laughs> um, I would also like to give a shout out to the bunnies that you guys have been seeing in the background this entire time. If you want to see more of them, you should come check me out on Twitch. They have their own dedicated webcam that is on every single one of my streams. 
and they have ruined world record speed runs before because they like to try and come and double my ankles when I'm trying to do runs. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but um, other than that, yeah, come check me out on Twitch if you guys like what you saw. I do a lot of Kuon. I do a lot of Fatal Frame games, some old obscure horror games. I also like to play RPGs occasionally, not just horror-based RPGs like Kadalka. But, yeah. All right. My name is Miss Scarlet Tanager. Yes, absolutely. And I uh, just wanted to take the time to thank Miss Scarlet Tanager as well as Punchy from before for being on this awfully spooky episode of Awfully Silly. Just wanted to remind everyone as well, if you've missed any of our GDQ Hotfix shows, don't forget that you can check out the archive of past runs at on YouTube, rather, at youtube.com slash games done quick. And we also have a highlights channel, which is GDQ Summer Best Segments. That is launched on YouTube. Um, it, it shows regular videos just like our main channel, but with a small highlight reel for all of our main events and hotfix shows. You can actually use exclamation point highlights in the Twitch chat to learn more about that. Um, but yeah, th uh, thank you so much. Um, after this, we're going to be having That's Never Happened Before with uh, A Link to the Past by Fant, who I see in the chat. Thank you so much. And uh, if you uh, like the show, like I said, every two weeks on the Team Velocity schedule, Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, you'll be able to find Awfully Silly taking a break, obviously, from two weeks from now because AGDQ 2022 online will be happening. Um, yeah, and my name is Conception SR, and thanks to everyone for watching. Stay tuned for That's Never Happened.